اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما سبحانك سبحانك لا علم لنا الا ما علمتنا انك انت العليم الحكيم وبعد Respected brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Last few days of Ramadan, and I hope everybody is having a blessed Ramadan and Mubarak. And inshallah, you make dua for me and all the Muslim brothers and sisters everywhere, inshallah. Iftar time is fastly approaching, and there's not much time for me to talk, and really, there's no days as well left uh, because today I think it's about 21, 22. Far. My time is between 40 to 4.30 and uh, really there's no, you can't really carry on talking after iftar or even after breaking the fast, but inshallah, see what happens. So to get to the point, <coughs> um, I've been talking about the 10 things of fitrah and about purity and about remaining pure and clean and, you know, rest of the things connected to this. and. The hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam narrated by many hadith scholars in their books. See the Aisha radiallahu anha narrates that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the ten things are from fitrah, basso sharibi, shortening of the mustache, i'fa'u lihiyati, lengthening of the beard, was siwaku, using of the miswak and the siwak, was tinshaqu al and rinsing of the nose, basso lagufari, Clipping of the nails, ghasl barajimi, washing of the joints, natful ibiqi, and removing of underarm hair, and you know, on armpits, wahalqul anati, and removing of pubic hair, when the qasul ma'i istinja, and also the tenth one, which is al khitan, mentioned in another hadith circumcision. So I've been talking about these ten things of fitra of purity, of the sunnah, of prophets, about the natural things for the human being. Five have been covered. Shortening of the mustache, covered. Lengthening of the beard, covered. Siwag and miswag, talked about that. And yesterday I talked about the rinsing of the nose and gargling, which is one. As I mentioned, these two both we will consider it to be one. That's number four. And number five, I talked about al-khitan, circumcision. Let's leave this with another five. So today I'm going to go on to those inshallah and just really rapidly and quickly I'm just going to discuss these. I'm feeling too well as well today so inshallah please <coughs> excuse me for if, if, if I don't talk well. <coughs> so we have the next one here which is Qasul al Ghafari. Qasul al Ghafari. The hadith says Qas. Qas means to clip. To cut. And Azhar, the word Azhar in Arabic is a plural of this, which means nails. So Azhar means nails. The cutting and the clipping of the nails. This is also one of the ten things of Fitrah, a very important, a very important uh, part of our, you know, the purity, the purity aspect of Islam. There are, many, there, are, there are reasons why this has been narrated by our beloved Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he mentioned this to be one of the things of purity and one of the things of fitrah and one of the things of the nature. The reason, there could be many, but just one or two reasons which comes into mind, which the ulama have discussed and mentioned and related and stated. One is that keeping long nails causes impurity dirt and filth to be gathered under, under the nails. If you don't cut your nails, if you keep the nails long, then what happens? Impurities, dirt, filth, and you know, things like that, they get stuck and they gather below the nails, and which is impure, which is not right, of course. You need to stay clean. So this is one of the reasons. And we know that. We see sometimes people who have long nails, that you know, it's all, it becomes all black and dark, and uh, it, becomes, it becomes all black and dark and, um, you know, all this impurity gets gathered under, under the nails and it's, it's really dark, you see. So therefore, this is all impurity and dirt becoming gathered below the nails. So this is one of the reasons. Another reason is that stops and prevents water reaching that part of the body which must be washed 
whilst performing wudu and whilst performing ghusl, whilst taking a ritual bath or uh, the obligatory bath or taking and performing of ablution. Because the part on the port of the, the you know the fingers it must be washed. Water must reach there. And if the nails are long, then water may not reach there, which will, in, as a result, make the ghusl, the bath, invalid or the wudu invalid. So this is another reason as well. So it's, it's a, a very important aspect of wash, uh, the cutting of the nails. Keeping long nails is not part, our, part of our faith and being. It's a very important. Brothers and sisters, males and females. Males normally cut it, but our sisters, unfortunately, they want to keep long nails and imitate the non-Muslim. This is wrong, really. It's not right. You should and you must, you know, clip your nails, cut your nails every so often, every two weeks, every week. You know, there's, there's, there's no adornment or beauty in keeping long nails. Long nails in the early times used to be the nails of witches or something. I don't know where this came from that you keep long nails. It looks so ugly, really. And it's not something of adornment. So keep short nails, you know, normal. You can put some henna and what we call mendi in, in, in the, you know, Urdu or Gujarati or whatever. But uh, in, in Arabic, you call it henna. You can put, put that, and inshallah, that's good. So uh, this is very important that we cut the nails, whether it's a male or it's a female. Remember here, when we say that there's a special method, the ulama have mentioned this special method, but it's not, nothing clear has been mentioned in the hadith that you must start from this finger and end at that finger. There's nothing clear cut and explicit mentioned. You see, therefore many ulama have stated that just cut as you wish, as you desire. There's nothing. So therefore extra emphasis, you should not place extra emphasis on this, that you must cut from this side or that side. But however, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa used to like to start everything from the right hand side. and every, you know. So therefore you should do the right hand first. And if you start from the right side, it's better, it's mustahab. But the the, deep, the order is not something necessary or greatly recommended per se and you know. And neither the day has been fixed by the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa There's no fixed date, day for it, whether, you know, that it's sunnah on this day. Nothing specific like that has been mentioned. Imam ibn Hajar al-Qalani mentions this in his book. And many other ulama have stated this. And uh, so therefore, you know, um, once a week at least, if, you know, uh, twice a week at least, if not once a week, nails should be cut. It depends. Some people, their nails grow very fast. Within a week, they'll grow. So they should cut their nails more often than those who, who you know, those people whose nails grow slowly. Uh, and uh, after cutting the nails, after cutting the, the nails, it's recommended that you bury it. It's, it's recommended to bury the nails. Everything, you know, the ulama have stated, anything that, that you remove and you detach from the body. You see the body, after a person passes away, the mayyit, the janazah, when the person passes away, what do we do? We bury it under the ground. So similarly, anything that is connected to the human body, hair, nails, anything that, you know, is moved and detached from the human body, is, it is also recommended to bury that as well. It's not necessary, but it's recommended. So therefore nails as well, it's recommended to bury it, but it's not rec uh, necessary, so therefore sometimes it's difficult. Therefore the ulama have stated that if you, if you throw it away in a, in a place like you wrap it up in a paper or something and you know, you, th you put it away, throw it away, there's nothing wrong whatsoever. Uh, it's not sinful or anything like that. So. It's better to bury it, but sometimes it's difficult. Every time you cut your nails, you go somewhere to bury it. You know, it's difficult sometimes. I mean, it is difficult, so therefore it's not necessary. Uh, but the, it is makruh and dislike. This is what the ulama stated that it is dislike to bury your nails in a uh, place where you take a bath, muqtasa. Taking where you take a bath, uh, and you know, in the toilet as well. In the bath and in the toilet, you shouldn't flush the nails down, which is makruh. This is what the ulama has stated. So this is just briefly about this the aspect of cutting of the nails and, you know, making sure the nails are short. 
males as well as females, brothers as well as sisters, is very important. And I said the sisters really should, you know, take this into account that keeping long nails is not right. It's not right. And if it becomes extremely long, then it'll be, it will be sinful as well. Because remember, it's two reasons there. And also, you know, the water does not reach below the nails. So therefore, it's very important. Extreme long nails, it's, it's not recommended for, 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 I mean, women should abstain from it as well. And another thing which has just come to mind, that some women, I mean, uh, following the trends of the time, they, they put nail varnish or nail polish on, which is completely not right. It's because it stops and it prevents water reaching the nails. Any wudu done, any ghusl, it will not be valid. If you perform your wudu and you perform ablution, or you take an obligatory bath, a ghusl, after you know becoming pure from, being, from your menstrual cycles and your menstrual periods, after that, or after stay, going into the state of impurity, Water does not go through the nail polish or the nail varnish. It's a barrier. It prevents water from reaching the nails. And therefore, the ghusl is not complete. The, the wudu is not complete. And if the wudu is not complete and the ghusl is not complete, then salah is not valid. Prayer is not valid. If prayer is not valid, then, you know, everything is not valid. So therefore, it's, you know, you must avoid nail varnish, pol uh, polishing your nails. It is not permitted. Yes, to use hina on the nails, that is permitted. That's okay, rather it's recommended. Why? Because that is not considered to be a perceptible barrier. It's not something which is like a perceptible barrier which prevents it. It's just, it's, it's not a coating. The nail varnish or the polishing of the nails, that's like a coating. But the hina, is, it's not a coating. It, it's just changes the pigment of the color. It's just the color is just changed, that's it. So therefore, this is one of the other things, uh, uh, number six part of our, the fitra, the challenge of fitra, the cutting of the nails, brothers as well as sisters, it's very important that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said that it is part of the sunnah of all the prophets and it's part of the nature, it's part of fitra, it's part of purity, it's part of hygiene, it's part of the natural thing for a human being that he she should clip and cut her nails. We go to the next one, number seven. The, the seventh thing from the ten things of Sitra is Ghaslul Barajimi, the hadith where the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Waqaslul Fari, and then after that he said, Waqaslul Barajimi, Ghasl means to wash. We have in the Arabic language, we have a Ghusl. And we have a ghasl. You see, they're both same words, but just the, the changing is of the, the haraka. You know, like ghasl is the fatha. Fatha of the, on the gha, there's fatha. And ghusl is with the dhamma. So ghusl and ghasl. Ghusl means to take a bath. And we use that in other languages as well. Ghusl is to take a bath. And ghasl does not mean to take a bath or a shower. It means to wash. Ghasl means wash. Ghaslul Wajhi, washing of the face. So Ghaslul Barajimi, washing of the joints. What does that mean, washing of the joints? The meaning of washing of the joints is that Barajim is the plural of a word called Burjuma. The hadith says Barajim, meaning that really any, it really talks about the joints in the fingers. Okay, you know, you know the uh, the real literal translation of that is, you know, the back of the fingers, you know, where the joints are, where, 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 where there are lines in the back of the fingers, you know, the, the, um, where there are lines, because it's very likely that dirt will be gathered there. But it's general. The ulama have stated the meaning of it is general that any part of the body where it is feared and where the chances of dirt being gathered are more likely. There are more chances of that. She said, any part of the body, any part of the body in which it is likely, and there's a great possibility of a bit of dirt being gathered there, then that dirt should be removed by washing it away and removing it completely. 
inside. So wherever there's like, you know, joint, the joints of the body, uh, w w wherever there are creases in the body, uh, you know, places like that where it's likely that dirt gets gathered. So this is very important uh, to remove it, like the inner part of the ears, inner part of the ears, you know, around the ears, that's the joints of the body, back of the neck. A lot of times it's very important that when we go to take a shower or a bath, we scrub the back of the neck because that's, it's very likely that dirt gets gathered there. And also, you know, uh, the ears area, as I said, and uh, any part of the body where it's likely that dirt will be gathered and it's part of fitrah that we should remove it by washing it, by cleaning it. So this is the meaning of, you know, غَسْلُ الْبَرَاجِبِ Okay, so that's how many done? I think um, there's nobody here next to me who tell me, yes, you know, when, when you talk normally in the message there's something said, how many done? So they'll tell you, okay, yeah, so you, you know people are with you. Here, you're talking to the wolves, you don't, you don't really know if people are listening or not listening, or I'm sure people are listening, but you don't get no feedback. But um, so I think we've done seven here, yeah, yes, we've done seven, we've done five, and we've done two more today. Qasul al-Fari and Qasul al-Barajimi. The cutting of the nails and washing of the joints of the body. Okay, seven. We have three more left, and I'm going to do one more today, inshallah. We have not full ibiti, the removing of underarm hair, halqul anati, and shaving of the pubic hair, and intiqasul ma'i and istinja and cleaning yourself when you go to the toilet that's very important that's i'm gonna talk about it like separately mm, uh, so we've got three more left and um, i'm going to talk about the next one which is net full ibit part of fitra is net full ibit net is to plant the word in arabic net means to plant and ibit an ibit with a ta at the end, not ta, ta, al ibil means underarm, the armpit. It's called ibil. Ibilun, and the plural is about in Arabic. So, net full ibil is to pluck the underarm, pluck the hair which is in, on the armpit. So, this is a number uh, uh, eight, the eighth. Thing which is from the fitra, from the purity, from the sunnah of our beloved messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is very important as well. And uh, removing of underarm hair has great emphasis, a lot of emphasis in the hadith as well. And uh, the word net has, well, what is the reason behind this? The hikmah, the wisdom, the reason behind is that, you know, having long underarm hair causes bad odor. You see, you know, sweat being gathered with the hair. It, 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 it you know, it, it's a really bad smell, and it's bad odor, and it gets, gives um, harm to other people and to your own self. If not to your own self, then at least other people will give harm to. And also because of sweat and dirt and everything gathering with that with that hair, it's not recommended that uh, you know uh, a person should make sure that he cleans that part of the hair. Uh, so it, it, it's very important that that part of the body we we, we make sure that we, we clean it and uh, we we make sure that we remove the hair from there and uh, that's one of the wisdoms and as in the hadith with the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said that as I mentioned that it says not not full ability which is plucking off the underarm hair. Now here, this is the reason, because of this hadith, the ulama have stated that it is recommended to pull and pluck the hair which is in the armpits rather than shave it. If there's nothing wrong in shaving it, there's nothing wrong in you know, removing it any way, shape or form. All, this, all these things which we are covering, removing of the hair can be, re can be removed through shaving, through uh, using of creams, through using whatever. Everything's permitted. There's nothing necessary. But some places it's more recommended to use one thing, one method than the other. Like for example here it's recommended that uh, 
the person should not shave it. Under, under the, the hair, which is under the uh, underarm hair, it's better, it's recommended that it's, it's plucked. The reason why is because what the ulama have uh, given the reason behind this is that if you pluck it, then it takes more time for the hair to grow back. You see, if, if, you, if you pluck it, if you shave it, then the hair will grow very quickly. But if you pluck it, then it will take more time for, for, the, uh, for the hair to grow back. And also, also another reason is that the bad odor which is uh, uh, under the arm, it becomes less if you pluck it than shaving it. And also another reason, another fa'idah or another benefit for that is that the hair, which if, if it's plucked, then it will grow soft and it, it won't be very spiky, the hair. But remember, this is the first time when, when a person is doing that. But however, if somebody's been shaving the underarm hair for, for years and years and now they start, after listening to me, they start plucking it, then it's going to be a problem, you know, so it's, it's difficult. So therefore, if, if, you, if you've been shaving it all the time, then it's not a problem, you can shave it. As I said, any method can be used. So this is about Nafful uh, Ibiti, the removing of the underarm hair, which is very important. Uh, and I said that there's nothing wrong in shaving it as well. And it should be, the fir first, the right arm should be uh, worked upon the hair in the under, uh, underarm of the right hand should be first removed and then the second one as there's no specific thing mentioned but as I said the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to like whatever everything he used to like to start from the right hand side so similarly here as well right hand side right arm first and then the left one it's recommended to remove this hair every week as I was talking about in the cutting of the nails as well it should be every week it's better that every week but uh, if somebody can't then at least in two weeks average the ulama have stated because some people the hair grows very quickly so they may need to do it every week every jumu'ah for example some may need two weeks so it's, it's recommended that every seven days every week the the hair is removed under arm under the under uh, under arm hair if not then at least every 15 days 14 days two weeks which is average and maximum which the ulama have given is 40 days after 40 days a person will be sinful to keep a hair unshaved, unremoved for more than 40 days under arm hair, that person will be sinful. And this is the same, this is the same ruling is given with pubic hair, which is the next one, which inshallah I'll talk about tomorrow. So after 40 days, the person will be sinful. So this, this is I think basically with regards to nutful ibiti, removing of under arm hair. And uh, I think I'll end with this inshallah. And as I mentioned that you can use anything, even the creams, the various types of creams which are available that can be used as well and uh, um, uh, that can be used inshallah so these are the eight things of fitra which we have done the hadith again the, you know the things which we have covered for the past few days where the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says ashura min al fitra ten things are from fitra ten things are from the sunnah of all the prophets they are part of purity they are part of and, you know, remaining clean and pure. Number one was cutting of the mustache. Number two was lengthening of the beard. Number three was using of miswak. Number four, we said uh, rinsing nose and gargling of the mouth. And, and number five, which uh, one, two, three, uh, for, yeah, number five, which we done was al khitan, which was um, circumcision. We talked about these five, and today we discussed three. Qasul al fari, which was cutting of the nails, ghasl barajimi, washing of the joints, and nutful ibiti, removing of underarm hair. So we've done eight things out of the ten things of fitrah, inshallah. We only have two more things left, and inshallah we'll talk about them tomorrow. One is pubic hair, and the other one which I want to talk about in detail, because it's, it's got a lot of rules connected to it, which is istinja, which is cleaning yourself after going to the toilet, after relieving yourself, cleaning oneself, with water and the rules connected to that about making sure the drops of urine are removed from a person's body, inshallah. So my time is up now, 4.30, and Jazakallah uh, khair for listening. I'm gonna, um, I need to leave now, inshallah. We have, I said, inshallah, I take permission. Jazakallah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.